So Kara's going to Awesome, yeah, Kara's starting. And yeah, welcome everyone. And thank you so much for coming. Mm -hmm. I just want to take a moment to say that as you heard, this event's being recorded. And to access mm -hmm. recordings of past talks we've hosted, you can go to the Arts Collective page on the Howard Center website. So I think everyone here is familiar with the Arts Collective, uh, but in case anyone watching the recording isn't, we are a supportive group of artists who have lived experience with substance use and or mental health challenges. And we get together to connect, share our work, plan events, and put on exhibitions. Uh, we've also held these virtual artist talks for the past couple of years. And our next artist talk will be with Susan Larkin in August. Um, just a quick note about the structure of today's talk. There will be plenty of time to ask questions, but we do ask that everyone keeps their questions and comments fairly brief so that everyone has a chance to ask them. And now I want to introduce our guest artist, Patty Hudak. Patty Hudak is an artist living in Underhill, Vermont, whose work embodies philosophy and processes linked to Ireland, China, and Japan. While living in China, her work evolved to include theories of ink painting and contains influences by the mystical Irish poet W.B. Yeats. In Japan, she studied traditional woodblock printing and carving, which she is using for both print and installation work. Since 2015, Hudak has created large-scale installations for the public in nonprofit spaces. These include the 2018-2019 Vermont Creation Grant Project, There Through the Broken Branches Go, exhibited in 2020 at the Southern Vermont Arts Center in Manchester, Vermont. Other large-scale installation projects include Sailing to Byzantium at Dublin Castle in Ireland and Botanical Ornaments at the T.W. Wood Gallery in Montpelier. Patty has traveled all over for various artist residencies, including Ireland, China, and Japan, and has given lectures for multiple embassies and schools. She studied art at Will Leslie College, the New York Studio School, and the Alternative Arts School. And we're really excited to have her with us today. Thank you so much for coming, Patty. And I'm going to hand it off to you now. Okay. Um, thank you, Sarah. Um, well, I'm, I'm so delighted to be here today. Um, I've been lucky to be a member of a, num a couple of art collectives. And um, I'll share a little bit about that in my talk. But um, yeah, it's just such a, a great way to um, to not feel alone when you're making art. Sometimes as an artist, you do spend time alone and to share what you're making and to get um, influences from other artists. Um, so I'm going to share my screen. Um, I, I put a lot of slides in my presentation and maybe we'll get to them all or maybe we won't. Um, um, I, I definitely want this to be a conversation. And um, because we're, we're not so many, um, uh, maybe we'll, we can, uh, you know, I'll, I'll make sure to, to leave some time at the end uh, for discussion. Um, okay. my, um, so yes, um, as Sarah said, I live in Underhill. Um, and so I think, uh, a lot of my influences would, you know, kind of be in common, you know, with, with uh, Howard Art Collective, um, definitely nature and emotion um, and connecting the two and connecting, um, co connecting myself to nature. Um, so I work in a lot of different mediums. Um, um, and that's something I'd also like to discuss with you is, is just um, how do things translate from one medium to the next? Um, uh, so sometimes I find it challenging, but also um, I find it like I get a different voice. So I wanted to start by just mentioning some of my, um, uh, the, the talk I'm going to uh, center around rather than chronological, what are some of my influences and how do I work? And, um, and maybe see where we relate. Um, so uh, I'm just going to name them now. That I, every day I do daily drawings, very influenced by ink painting, uh, by philosophy, particularly uh, Chinese philosophy, by scale. I, I like to work sometimes either really big or really small. Um, shadows and exploring. Um, 
um, not just shadows of light, but shadows of self, you know, kind of the dark side. We're, we're, we're th bringing things that are hidden out into the, um, into the surface. Um, painting, uh, which uh, painting always seems to me to be um, kind of embody all of the, all of my creative thought at once, where when I work in different mediums, I feel like I can kind of rest from, you know, explore different aspects of, of myself with painting. I feel the direct challenge to really uh, engage in kind of a relationship with what I'm making. Um, I am interested in mysticism. Sarah mentioned W.B. Yeats. Um, uh, he feels he's an Irish poet and I have a, my mother is from Ireland. And so I go back and forth a lot and I kind of feel like he is sort of a, a, a spirit force behind some of my work. Um, and collage, Mokohanga, I'll, I'll, um, I'll talk about that a little bit. That's a, a form of um, Japanese wood blocking that wood block paint, uh, printing that I learned in Japan. Um, it's all water based and it's hand printed. You don't need a printing press. It's very accessible. Uh, and then community. Um, I'm also part of an art collective now called the Mokohanga Sisters, where we practice uh, Mokohanga, the form of Japanese printmaking that I mentioned. Um, so this is uh, myself, the way I look. Um, since uh, I was little, um, my my left eye, you can see on the right side of the picture, turns in just a little bit. Um, so I have, uh, it's corrected with glasses, but without glasses, um, I don't have um, bifocal vision. Um, and this, in fact, um, it's it's actually quite common in artists. Um, to have this, it's sort of the world becomes a little bit flatter. Um, it's nearly impossible to catch a baseball. <laughs> There's I have very little depth perception. And uh, so I think some of that way of exploring the world um, that entered and, you know, I thought it, that might be an interesting discussion too, like what parts of our anatomy or, or, or our own development, uh, physical development um, impacts how we make art. Um, so first uh, part of my talk, I want to talk about uh, my daily drawings. And um, this is a habit that I have that that really informs all of my work. So when I wake up in the morning, um, before the day happens, anything happens, I just draw for 10 minutes. Um, and in these drawings, I don't, I don't ever exhibit these. Um, and I don't post them on Instagram. They're only for myself. Um, I get rid of the critical mind. Um, it just becomes like purely an exercise to kind of see what the shape of my thoughts are that day, um, what kind of patterns come out. Um, now, some of these I would work on um, I wouldn't complete the whole thing in 10 minutes, but maybe the next day I would draw 10 more minutes on it. And it's not a 10 minutes is not a hard and fast, but I find if I, I kind of wake up and say 10 minutes, you can always get 10 minutes, <laughs> you know, it, it, you know, I can wake up 10 minutes earlier or that kind of thing. But, um, and I don't, I maybe do this like 90% of days. There are days that I miss, but um, this kind of fuels in some ways, my development as an artist and as a person, it kind of gives me a window into um, what's on my mind. Um, I don't always understand them, actually don't understand them at all. And I don't really try to, so I don't judge them or anything. Um, Patty, I'm sorry to interrupt. I just, mm -hmm. I wondered if this was supposed to change screen. I'm seeing this, the first original screen. Oh, Is anyone no. else? Oh, so you've been staring at the same screen. Yes, yeah, same, yeah, same screen. Yeah. 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 In fact, I just got off and came back on again, and it's I don't see anything changing. Oh, it says screen sharing is paused. Why? Oh. Okay, I'm gonna stop the share. Yep. And sometimes it does that. I've had that experience. Oh, okay. So you're on the same one. Okay, now. 
Okay, let me escape. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. Okay, share screen. And then, um, what is this? Keynote. I'm not sure. I have to. Okay, let's. There you go. Now we can see. Okay, so I'm screen sharing. And mm -hmm. um, does the screen change? Or no? Is it changing now? It is. Okay. All right. So you see that the words coming up. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. So this was just a list of the topics that we're talking about here. Mm. This is my, my eye turned in <laughs> the way I look. Um, I have an identical twin sister who doesn't have that. Um, just an interesting fact. And, and that, and then the daily drawings. Um, is it full screen? Do I need, is it still? changing now. now it's full screen and you can see this the images change no it's staying the same what i wonder why huh well i'll just do it it's not quite full screen now i'll i guess i'll just present like this because i can't understand when i hit play which this has always worked for me on keynote when i hit play it, it seems like it doesn't, it pauses the sharing. Oh, resume share. No? It gives me a space to resume. I'm so sorry about this. No worries. Okay, well, let me just show it. Um, I'll just show it this size. Um, and sorry about that. So you see it changing now? Yeah. Okay, okay. All right, so these are my daily drawings, what I had mentioned before. Um, so I just draw for 10 minutes every morning before, um, before anything kind of hits me. And I draw without judgment and just see what comes up. So the next thing I wanted to talk about my influence was ink painting. Um, so in um, 2008, uh, we moved to Beijing, China, my family. Um, we had lived for two years already in Hong Kong and were immersed in Chinese culture. Um, and I think for any of you who have lived in another culture or even if you're new to America, um, when you live elsewhere, there's there's kind of a gentle peeling away of of kind of the cultural ideas, um, and you learn sort of bit by bit, layer by layer. Um, and in China, um, ink is kind of everywhere. Um, you see it, you know, in the grocery store. You see ink painting at the market. You see it in museums. Um, and initially, it kind of looked very like. I didn't understand it. I really didn't understand. Um, so I decided to try. Um, and there's some big differences in Chinese painting and um, European style painting. And one first one is in the brush. Um, so a Chinese brush is very long and it's very soft, where our brushes, some of them are that way, but a lot of them are they're more planar. They're just define, you know, kind of the 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 angles of things. Um, um, this is how you hold a Chinese brush. It's very different than how we hold. Uh, uh, so you hold it very much upright uh, and the ink flows down. Um, and even the the, the brush marks, um, uh, you know, if we were thinking of drawing this character, we might just do a straight line across on the top, but you can see the line kind of bends and turns. So the brush, not only is it softer, but when you use a Chinese brush, you push up and down so it can get wider and thinner when it creates the mark. Um, so children, um, they become very acquainted with brushwork very early on, um, creating characters. And here are some kids playing with 
um, flowers that they found in creating um, Chinese characters using water. It takes a lot of practice. I, I, I went, visited a Chinese calligrapher and this was uh, sort of behind his studio. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you know, a lot of practice and a lot of um, mental energy. Um, so I decided to try uh, myself. Um, so the, the, the paper that you use to do ink painting is very absorbent uh, and the brush is very sensitive. So it, it very much captures the emotion of the artist. In other words, if, you, if you're feeling nervous, it will show because your hand will shake. It will show in, in the painting. And so you can kind of get a, a sense of what your emotions are based on how you're painting that day. And like traditionally people would um, kind of clear their mind uh, or, or use gesture, clear their mind before they paint to try to, be, to, to paint with a calm mind. I also found that ink painting calms my mind when, when I'm painting in ink. Um, and also, you know, the gesture of the body, you know, uh, it, it captures. Um, I, I often would work on the floor um, to, so I can move my body with the ink. And sort of within Chinese philosophy, the idea is that the paper or the white is like the air. So it needs to breathe. You need to leave uh, white space for it to breathe. Um, and then the black or the ink is like the bones. And that's what you build sort of the structure of your work with. So there's a really value in like the whitest white and the darkest, the blackest black. So while I was in China, I also really learned a lot about the philosophy. And um, one of the biggest differences that I noticed that I still, um, that I really think about when I create artwork is um, kind of the way I grew up, we, we kind of thought about humans and nature, like as if we're two separate things. And in China, both China and Japan, the, the philosophy leans more towards we are part of nature. So we, it's not like humans in nature. It's kind of like there's a whole big um, world and we're all part of the same system. Um, and I, I, I like that idea. It also seems more true to me. So in, um, uh, in, in Chinese philosophy, you have the air, which is, they call it qi. So it's like the air is kind of the universe. It's everything. Um, and in, in the air, things are sort of divided into yin and yang or like darkness and light. Um, and so within, within that you also have, nothing is like 100% yin or 100% yang. Everything kind of mixes together and it leans in those two different directions between the, the yin and the yang and the light and the dark. Um, and also they have their system of alchemy um, is is a bit different than ours. So there are uh, um, uh, five elements. So you have metal element, you have a wood element, which is like uh, plants and trees, as well as, you know, uh, uh, wooden things, uh, water, uh, fire, and earth. Um, and those also, um, if you've heard of feng shui, sometimes people try to balance these elements in their house or with their food or with other things. But um, one thing that's, um, also really hit me is that they're not separate elements, is that one kind of flows into the next. Um, and it also is kind of memory system. So there are five, so we have five fingers, so you can remember on your hand, you kind of put things in different categories. Or, um, so these things really influence me, like that the, there is this whole other kind of philosophy. Uh, um, um, and then the final thing that I really picked up on was uh, this I idea of um, the landscape painting in China. They call it Shan Shui, which means mountain and water. And so it was this idea of when I'm painting to think of um, maybe sort of more horizontal lines as the mountain and more vertical lines of the water and the water would flow down the mountain. So sometimes when I'm drawing, I think about if, if if the structure that I drew is like mountains, how would the water go down? 
Um, those were some things. The other thing that I really came back from China, we were in China for eight years, uh, was this idea of scale. And in we lived in Beijing, and in Beijing, everything is sort of monumental size, a very large scale. So even um, if you look at a map and you think, oh, it's three blocks, I could walk that. Well, the three blocks are really gigantic. So it's like everything is sort of magnified in size, even the width of the streets. Um, so I used to ride my bike every day. Um, uh, even the bike lanes were wide. They're about nine feet wide. Uh, and, you know, I would watch shadows passing under me. Um, the light in Beijing is very dry and very, um, it's actually um, on a non-pollution day, it's very beautiful, the light. Um, so I started to work larger in Beijing. Um, and this is an um, a, a installation I did that is based on Yeats' poem, Sailing to Byzantium. And this had some ideas about, um, you know, I think if you're familiar with Yeats, almost all of his poetry has to do with either love or death or love and death combined. <laughs> um, and so this was his idea of mortality that um, he was aware of his aging body. And he had this idea that if he could go back to Byzantium was like ancient Greece and become a gold statue, uh, then he could be immortal. Um, so I had this idea of his trip to Byzantium, sailing to Byzantium, sailing through time, and my bicycle rides uh, in Beijing on this nine foot wide bicycle path. So this piece is as wide as a Beijing bicycle path. And these are um, representative of ink, but also of um, the shadows that would pass under my feet when I was riding my bike. So my ride to my studio was in a way like uh, Yeats' ride to Byzantium. Uh, and it came back uh, to Vermont and I continued to work in large scale, um, also separating this idea of um, elements into color. And here's a couple of more large scale pieces. Also, um, this came from also from Yeats. It's it's very much what you see in Vermont when spring comes, when springtime comes, um, it, it seems to come all at once, but almost like a blanket, you know, covering the ground. Like it's sort of like we have winter for so long and then things start to bud and the green comes and it's just like a wave or a blanket of color um, going over the landscape. Oh, that's very similar. And uh, that's a, a print installation that I did this year. Also, uh, just um, now we're, I work in paper and um, just learning how to bring scale, large scale. I like that I that feeling of engulfing people into, into my work and what I'm making, surrounding them with um, the image. So the next thing that influenced me is shadows. Um, and again, um, sort of this idea of, of maybe ink painting, shadows on the ground, sh branching shadows, and um, this idea of layering shadows uh, as opposed to layering light, you know, uh, uh, and, and in some way uh, thinking about shadow and, and, and layering shadow also brings me kind of deeper into maybe the shadow sides of myself and, and allowing them um, some space. Um, this is some work that I did at the Southern Vermont Art Center in um, Manchester, Vermont. They have some beautiful rooms and spaces for exhibiting art and um, it's pretty accessible to artists. That's another piece I did with um, kind of painting in torn paper. Again, kind of um, getting into the dark sides. And so painting I mentioned, um, this is a series of painting I just exhibited in Johnson, Vermont. Um, and I wanted to show them, it's, I think these really relate to the daily drawings that I was talking about. Um, and these I found very challenging. Again, sometimes with the ink, it's more immediate. Um, uh, with the watercolor, other mediums, but painting really challenges me. Um, I kind of think 
in the sense of having a relationship with the work, like the work is telling me what to do. Um, so I'll reach a certain point and um, uh, it says change colors. I feel like there's a relationship where the painting is talking to me. Um, and I'd love to talk to you more about how, how you how you generate ideas and how what kind of feedback you get from work that you do. Some of these kind of feel like they're coming from the interior of the body. Um, again, it's coming from uh, Yeats, uh, his poem called Two Trees. Uh, one tree is love and one tree is death. Um, kind of getting, um, uh, this is kind of about uh, like demons sort of coming out. Um, but sometimes they, when you think of the demons, they also um, protect as well as uh, uh, are intimidating. And, you know, kind of how the inside of our bodies mimic the, uh, nature or trees, like the trees, the landscape that that we see in Vermont. So, and then I also do some digital art. Um, um, let's see if I can put that in the page more. Um, it, working digitally, I don't really know why, but it does, I think as it's, you can make these spectacular things um, uh, uh, through digital drawing um, and transcend maybe the ability of your hand. Um, so these are based on the forest, but also um, kind of the idea of the human body. Um, I've printed those very large. These are brand new. Um, so this kind of some like something being created out of nothing. And then, yeah, uh, digital printing. Um, I've been kind of layering them and painting them and printing them on Japanese paper. So they have kind of a uh, um, more matte sort of softer look than sometimes. Okay, so finally, I, 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 the medium that I'm working on in, in the most now, it's called moku hanga. Um, it basically, the moku means wood and hanga means print. So it just means wood printing. Um, uh, it comes originally from China uh, and in the 700s, uh, the Japanese um, picked up a lot of the Chinese art forms. There was a lot of communication between the two and China had a very strong empire at the time. And um, uh, Japan uh, uh, kind of took a lot of influence in writing and arts. Um, eventually they took it in their own direction and um, uh, developed it into a very high, uh, uh, a very developed form of printmaking. Um, so uh, yeah, these are some works that I'm doing um, in in Mokohanga. Um, I'm I'm doing individual pieces which I then collage together. So this one is quite large. Um, these were influenced. I I, I was in a um, during pandemic a um, kind of an online group where we um, explored the idea of depression and relating it to the form of a crater. Um, and this idea of, you know, kind of spiraling down and spiraling out, you know, letting light in. Um, so we had a, a discussion group around that and we all created art relating to that, um, that idea of kind of um, uh, uh, spinning in and out. I start to relate it more to some kind of pattern, pattern making. Um, I also work in color. I wanted to <laughs> put that because uh, I'm working a lot. And this is also Sumi ink. Um, it's the same ink um, that I was using in, in um, the, the ink painting. Um, so mokohanga can be done um, with, with Sumi ink or with watercolor or gouache. So you don't need any, you don't use any polymers or you don't use any heavy inks. It's very easy to wash up, it uses very little um, kind of water or, or resources. In fact, um, my neighbor at one point needed some um, uh, paper for her compost and um, I had some old um, test prints and everything is, it, when using Sumi ink, everything is compostable <laughs> with, with the Japanese paper. So um, it's very environmentally friendly. Um, 
And then so finally, community, which is something um, I would love to hear more about about your community, but also the benefits of being part of a community. Uh, so these are nine women. Um, uh, we collaborate. We're, we're, uh, we don't meet weekly, but we meet monthly. Um, and um, we talk about our ideas, our life, um, and then we also uh, do projects together. So this is a scroll we made, um, uh, which is joined in using a traditional method. Um, we each did one panel, and um, uh, then they're all joined together, and um, we presented this um, uh, in, in a number of spaces uh, in Nara, Japan, as well as in Vermont at Southern Vermont Art Center um, and you know, New York, and now it's uh, on view in Dublin. Um, so, and we also organized exhibitions. This was an exhibition that was at Southern Vermont Art Center last winter, um, it had about 175 artworks. Um, and the way we organized it was there were nine of us and all of us invited somebody who was either a teacher of ours or a student all working in this Mokohanga method. Um, and so we had about 175 prints um, and then we were later invited to show it um, in New York City and Red Hook, Brooklyn, uh, and then also at St. Lawrence University. So we give lectures, talks, exhibitions, um, as well as uh, this was a children's workshop that we gave in Brooklyn. Um, yeah. So that's all I have to say. I hope it wasn't too long. And I'm sorry that uh, I'm sorry the the screen was not sharing properly. Um, but I would love some time for just a little bit of discussion with you. And um, let me stop the share. Yes. Okay, I think we stopped sharing. Yes. Awesome, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, yeah, I don't know if you have any specific um, like directions you wanna discuss or anything, but I do have a question. Sure. Um, I was definitely intrigued by the digital art because I, I do some digital drawing and um, we don't get many artists to do that. Um, oh. So I was wondering like, what your process is for that, like what tools you use and and how you do that. Yeah, it, I've been meeting more artists who are using um, Procreate on the iPad. So I'm interested in in trying that out. Um, I usually, I all, almost always draw in Illustrator. Um, and what I do is from the daily drawings, I scan them and then I um, create outlines and then I put those into the Illustrator program. And then sometimes I'm copying and pasting and making larger and smaller. Um, uh, and yeah, I find with the digital drawing, I, I engage 100% mentally um, in, in what I'm doing. Um, sometimes I miss the artist's hand in the digital. Um, but, um, but like I said, I've been seeing people using now this procreate, and I think it has a lot of potential to kind of combine that kind of spectacular look you can get in digital with, with the hand-drawn look that mm. has more, you know, sensitivity to it. Um, so how do you use it, Sarah? How do you, um, yeah, uh, I, I do use procreate. Um, I've had um, mostly I, I've done like illustrator before but yeah I just like use it just like a regular pencil and um, I agree I like that it has that like hand-drawn aspect still but yeah I, I really love the ones that you showed I think oh, that's thank really you. cool thank you for sharing that thank you thank you yeah, I'm going to start working now. I, I've printed some out onto Japanese paper and I want to do the, the Mokohanga work uh, combined with the digital. Um, it's like Mokohanga, it comes, it's like from the year 700 or something like that. 
And to combine it with 21st century medium, I think it's really exciting, the dialogue. That sounds amazing. Yeah, I guess um, in terms of questions I had, I was really curious about um, kind of daily rituals. I mean, even if they're not daily or if they're when you go into your studio, like what is the process that you use to sort of like get into your work? Like to you transition from, you know, kind of your life and everything that's going on in there to then, or is it just true drawing? Mm. I change my clothes. Like I have a paint clothes and that's like the, the demarcation, like it's time to start work and I love that idea. And do you always work in the same space then? Um, no, I have a couple different places. But um, when I go to paint, it's always in the same place. Yeah. So the changing of the clothes sort of signifies to you that it's time to leave things, leave right. your life behind. and That's right. Okay. And enter the inner sanctum of whatever yeah. mm. Mm. lovely yeah for me i i find i've tried different things but for me i find if i go to my art table first thing in the morning like coffee in hand <laughs> um and go straight there i'm most successful at at first um you know fulfilling that commitment to myself of being uh, of creating for an hour every morning um an hour is the most I can do really with with full-time work and everything um but I find that if I wait and try to do it late morning or in the afternoon hmm. um my either I'm not successful at getting to the table because something else gets in the way or I get there but there's so much going on in my head work-wise or relationship-wise or whatever that I, I don't relax into the, the actual create, creating of art. Um, so for me, it kind of has to be first thing in the morning. Yeah, so wait, getting up first thing makes it also a priority or it's for you, your time for yourself to... Yeah, yeah. And my mind is, my, I guess, more clear. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I find that too, that the... the mental processes clearer in the morning yeah yeah so anyone does anyone else want to add to that uh idea it's okay and then I, I the other question i had is about working in different um mediums like how do you find um at the moment in my own work, I'm trying to get the different mediums to talk to each other because sometimes I feel like there's, they stay in their own areas. Um, how do you find that? Do, or do you work in multiple mediums? And do you find you have one medium that really expresses one part of you and another medium that expresses something else in you? I definitely have that experience, like drawing something versus like crafting something versus like photographing something. I feel like they're all, um, they each have a different part of me that they connect to and express different things. And um, yeah, I think I've been trying to think about that too, like how they can say some of the same things if it's possible. Mm -hmm. Mm. yeah and and do they ever cross over like do you find the work you do in crafting like some of that somehow coming into your digital like the shapes or the patterns or something yeah I think so I think um in thinking about that more I've started to like maybe 
start by taking some of the same content and taking it from one medium to the next and seeing how it evolves from there, like starting with the same basic shape or image. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Um, thinking about that a lot lately and, um, Sometimes I, I work in different spaces and then sometimes I try to put everything in the same room together and, and sort of see how things happen, you know, how things work. So, and the other no, thing, sorry. Oh, go ahead. no, no, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, I think being um, part of the collective has, has brought me into the, more into the idea of mixing medias. Um, mm. I, I used to, th I'm, you know, self-taught I didn't study art at all um so when I first started um doing watercolors I kind of had this idea that that was very pure like watercolor had to be on you know arches paper it had to be like Holbein watercolors and and nothing could come into that realm and mm -hmm. um come you know being part of this collective and every week seeing people share their work I started seeing oh you know people mix medias mediums all the time and um I, you know, was influenced a lot, I'd say, by other artists in the group. And now I mix everything. I've got collage with watercolor paint on top of it and mark making with paint pens. And, um, you know, nothing is um, out of the question. Um, even I, I lately, I, I copied Colleen's idea of bringing photographs into my painting. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I never thought of that either. And I think I saw... I don't know if you do that regularly, Colleen, but I saw it in your Fleming Museum piece, and I, I've been cutting out pieces of photographs and sticking them on my, my art. And so I get ideas from from this group, which um, is really helpful. Yeah, I love that when somehow being part of a collective gives you kind of a freedom, you know, like um, you see other people doing something, you realize, oh, I you can do that. <laughs> you know, um, even when I first started printing, printmaking with the Mokohanga method, I, I didn't come at it from printmaking. So like you were saying uh, uh, about the, the watercolor, like it's, it's got to be a certain way. I thought printmaking had to be a certain way and you had to be kind of, you know, buttoned up and no fingerprints on anything. And every print had to be exactly the same. And then I realized like through being in my collective that Oh, you can collage. <laughs> you can do this. You can. Do it doesn't have to be on a square piece of paper. Like, um, you don't have to make twenty identical ones. You know. So yeah, it's something how um, being part of a collective, you, you you teach each other through your work, don't you? Yeah. I also kind of wanted to jump in about. Um... I have I've always enjoyed using a lot of different media um, over the years and mixed media is seems to fit me the best because I can bring in photography, I can bring in drawing, I can bring in painting and collage and um, I enjoy not limiting myself to one thing. I, years ago I, I did I just do drawings and then I did well sculptures for, oh, and then I, I did both of those simultaneously. Like um, I was very um, fascinated with fire escapes. And mm -hmm. so these stark black and white drawings and, and wall sculptures were like um, really fascinating to me for a while. And then I kind of um, moved away from that and it's funny because with a wall sculpture, I was like, never, sh I didn't know what I was doing. I was not good at a, being a carpenter. I just mm -hmm. kind of like fudged my way through everything. But there was something about them being on the wall and being three dimensional that um, I just loved. But it's funny, it's been years since I've done that. Now I'm like pretty much in square rectangular format. Um mixed media so I guess yeah. you just jump around from or not jump around but evolve over the years you know like depending on your subject matter yeah and it sounds like the sculpture was a bridge like that mm. 
to make, you know, you, you entered a medium you didn't really know about, right? You know, um, um, which was something else I wanted to talk about was this idea of going into kind of uncertainty with art, like, um, and um, often I, I work by not knowing without a plan, let's put it that way, um, and see what comes out. And often it's the artwork that is telling me what to do, you know, what's the next move, what's the next color, what, and um, maybe that sounds kind of crazy, but I'm just wondering if any of you have that kind of experience where you kind of, or is it always that way where you go in with uncertainty and then you get feedback from, uh, you know, what, what your experience is along that, those lines. I have a very conscious program of every other, like for every series of paintings, there's a, a number of them that are planned, that have preparatory sketches and a lot of planning. And then I'll split it and then equal amount will be spontaneous, no planning. So they're sort of 50-50 in a group of paintings. And that seems to to work for me. Like I like the planning part, but I also like the the freedom of just you know whatever is going to happen. Would that be in the same series, Adam? You would have really. Yeah. I mean, it's not always exactly fifty fifty, but I try to do every other one, or you know. Yeah, that probably balances things too, because sometimes it, when you're working with uncertainty, there can be kind of an anxiety around it, you know, like mm -hmm. going into that unknown place. Um, and, you know, I suppose it's different parts of your mind that are working too, like the planning one, you kind of know, you can predict what the material is going to do. And, you know, you have something direct you really want to let people know about or, or you know present and then there's the other side which needs to explore you know mm -hmm. and, and find um i guess it's this idea of finding out like what's in your mind that wants to come out if you're not controlling the result you know um yeah. so i think to have those both both the, both of those sides is really powerful you know to um to have the one directed and intentional you know and the other a little bit unknown right you know well i also like the surprise of you know i'm very uh I'm more like product oriented than process. So like, I'm either satisfied with the final work or not. And I never know if I'm gonna, if the, which approach is gonna be more successful. Like, so I could plan a painting and plan it and work on it for months. And at the end, it could be terrible. And then, or it could be good. And likewise, I could spontaneously paint something and it could be, you know, on point, or it could be a flop. And it's, it's nice to have both try, you know. Yeah. To do anything, both. get to, the, to the, the finish line, you know. Yeah, 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 that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. And I think um, doing this woodblock printing has, um, has now put me all, I, and I don't want to say more in, but in, and I know that lines are getting blurred now between, it used to be like there's art and there's craft, you know, and I mm -hmm. think happily now those worlds, that line is, is sort of disappearing. Um, 
and the woodblock printing has has put me more in the world of craft of you know carving wood and learning a tradition and understanding paper and you know these material things and i i think it's kind of like you were saying um with your planning like it's it's given me more structure to so i'm not just dependent on you know uh oh the painting's not giving me feedback right now or I may be misreading yeah. the feedback that I'm getting. You know, there's a plan, like you said, there's a plan um, and there's a method. Um, and yeah, there, there's, you know, something more like that, you know? Um, so yeah, I'm also curious about that with, with um, Sarah, you mentioned that you also do craft. Like what, what is, what is, do you find, um, I don't know this the, the difference between craft and digital drawing say like of course you know on the surface it's like oh digital drawing it's it's 21st century and it's mechanical or whatever and craft is you know something you know historically you know our mothers 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 have been doing craft and and um yeah what what is that like for you what do you what do you think about that um I guess I do think about them a little bit differently in that way. Like with the digital drawing, it feels more um, a direct expression of me. And with craft, I feel sort of a connection, um, maybe because it's it's so physical with my hands, or maybe it's because I'm doing something, yeah, that like my grandmother's done or something like that. But um, it feels definitely more connected like I'm drawing on more than just um what I want to express mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I would say that <laughs> yeah and sometimes craft has sort of also practical side to it you know where um even my prints when they're not working out I can cover a box with them or I can um, use them for wrapping paper or make a gift card or you know there's <laughs> There's sort of this practical side that uh, craft has uh, that I like. Yeah, definitely. I feel that way like sometimes. Um, my sort of failed crafts become um, maybe something that is more for me than you know for the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Patty, can I ask you a question? Sure. Um, I was really intrigued about. Uh, how you described your morning drawings um, mm -hmm. being really kind of just, uh, did you say 10 minutes? Did, is that how you Yeah, 10 that? minutes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and just being really loose and organic about it. Um, but then I think you said later that you, you also use those in other uh, formats. Yeah, yes. The, there'll be times when um, I'll either scan them onto the computer and then bring them into Illustrator and then okay. manipulate them from there. Um, or sometimes sometimes what happens is because it's repeated every day, um, I think it forms a vocabulary. So in the paintings that I showed, um, which I, I just did this winter, I finished them this winter, um, what happens is some of those, like I notice I'll repeat certain patterns of lines or certain way to make a, a curved line or something like that. So it's not like directly transferred in that case, um, but it's it becomes part of my vocabulary. Um, mm. So sometimes I, I like before I was doing these in the morning, this the morning drawings I was doing since 2020, like a lot of us picked up different habits in pandemic. Um, but I always did some form of this, but usually it was almost like, um, sometimes it would be when I got in my studio, um, when I was in China, when I got to my studio, I would write Chinese characters, which are like little compositions, you know, they're very balanced, you know, and then I would draw for, for 10 minutes and then I would start painting or doing other drawings or that kind of thing. So the mm -hmm. kind of, this kind of idea, the ritual has been part, um, but, I have to say the development that happens 
uh, or for for myself was is extraordinary. Um, because I think sometimes you, I, I would go into my drawings and draw and be self-critical. And that blocked, you know, my expression. Um, so um, I started off, when I started the daily drawings, I started doing them. I don't know if you have sketchbooks that are like half full or you bought it and you did a few drawings on a vacation that you were going to draw the whole time, but then, you know, I had kids and stuff like, you know, like these things happen. So I, I noticed I had these notebooks that were like partially full. So I thought, oh, I'm just going to use these and finish them. Or, you know, uh, my husband got one at a, um, you know, a conference he went to is just like the binder's a little broken, but okay, I'll just use the paper in that. And so, uh, so I did, I, I kind of allowed them to be like not anything that or oh, just movement, my hand and I moving on a page. That's all they are. Mm -hmm. They're not anything, you know, that I have to judge or jump into or think about. And then I shut the book and then put it away. So now for Christmas, um, my husband got me a nice book to draw in. Um, and um, and I, I have continued like not worrying about what it looks like. You know, there are a lot of pages in this book. So I know like, you know what, they are just, this is just going to be what this whole book is. Um, and I draw with the same pen. Um, and then, like I said, if it's, you know, cause then you could beat yourself up when you acquire a new habit, like, Oh, I didn't draw today. And, you know, but I just say, you know, if it's 80% of days or 90% of days, you know, say some days you get up, you have to go to the doctor or somebody, somebody's sick or something happens in the home or, um, that's fine too, you know, mm -hmm. you know, so I think I've kind of let go of some of my critical mind by, by doing mm. this kind of thing the, the the thing that was sabotaging myself I kind of mm -hmm. it helped me to let go of that yeah thanks for explaining that a little bit more I love the idea and I, I think I might like to try that yeah there was um there's a very famous book um the artist's way mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. does this equivalent with 10 minutes of writing um, and I tried that at one point in my life, but I was like, why am I doing all this writing? <laughs> I just felt a little like, oh, I'm doing all this writing. And I think it does really work. But I was, then I thought, why not try it with drawing? Just some morning pages with drawing, um, because that's really what I want to do. That's what I want to spend my time doing. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so that's kind of how we, uh, how I kind of worked out the 10 minutes. And uh, I know I think she says three pages of handwritten writing, um, which is also great. Um, but, you know, at a, sometimes you just have to pick, like, for me, it should be, it's better for me if it's drawing. Um, and, mm -hmm. and I've been loving it. And now I, even sometimes I'll go up to my room and um, the notebook, it's yellow, like is next to my bed. And I'll just sit on my bed and look through it. Like I like, I, I've, I, mm. it's a friendly um it's a friendly thing for me now mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah that sounds so positive and like helpful I love that um so we're a few minutes after one now um mm -hmm. so I guess we'll have to wrap up but thank you so much for coming everyone especially Patty thank you so much for spending some time with us today and anywhere that you want to point us to see more of or purchase your work? Yeah, well, just my website, um, pattyhudak.com. I could put it in the chat and then I'll put also my collective. Dot com is my, oops, I think I messed it up, but um, put it in the chat and then the, the, Mokohangasisters.com. So we have a lot of work on the Mokohanga Sisters, um, uh, which is like an archive now of this kind of work being done. So it's very, it's very pretty. It's very beautiful work. Um, uh, so we've kind of created like an archive. It takes a while to load because there's so many images on it, but um, it's it's very pretty. Cool. 
Okay, can't wait to take a look. Yeah, me too. Thank you so much. I I really enjoyed this um, spending time with you, and um, uh, I'll look for your Sarah. I I want to go on your mailing list for sure, and and um, uh, just keep me updated with your events. Absolutely. Thank you so much. It was so wonderful to have you. Yeah. Thank you, Thank Patty. You so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.